Leon Edwards is the current UFC welterweight champion. Not only is he an amazing fighter, but he's incredibly athletic and he has a crazy aesthetic physique. Many of you not only want to look like Leon Edwards, but perform like him as well. Leon Edwards' strength and conditioning coach, who you guys should follow, has recently been posting footage of Leon Edwards' training. Because I'm here to make fitness great again, I'll be going over Leon Edwards' resistance training routine. Kind of a spoiler, but everything that Leon Edwards does is done in my 120-day peak athleticism package. This takes the guesswork out of training like an elite athlete to help you perform at your best. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. In this video, I'll be strictly going over Leon Edwards' resistance training routine. If you want to learn how to balance MMA with the gym, my brother Mario made a video on this, which you should check out. First, I want to go over the benefits of lifting for MMA fighters. Because there's this claim by athletes that lifting is bad and that it makes you slow, which is absolutely ridiculous and false. Lifting weights, especially with a proper training routine, will lead to improved power and explosiveness, improved muscular endurance, decreased injury risk, and enhanced overall physical fitness. Before I actually get into Leon Edwards' training routine, I want to go over general concepts of his training. First of all is training frequency. In camp, Leon Edwards trains about three times per week. Some of you may be thinking that's kind of low, but in camp, Leon Edwards is prioritizing skills training. Leon's coach also frequently has him using resistance bands and chains to change the resistance profile of the exercise. This allows him to more easily accelerate out of the bottom of the movement, which is the least advantageous part of the movement, so he can perform explosive reps as power is so important for MMA fighters and athletes in general. Power is different than strength. An easy way to think about it is power is strength time speed. Because sport movements happen too fast to produce maximal force, power is so important. An analogy I like to use is a one rep max bench press. During a one rep max bench press, you're producing maximal force, but it's slow as fuck. You don't have that much time in a fight or any sport activity to generate force. While you do wanna be able to generate lots of force, you have to be able to do it fast, which is why power is so important. Leon also doesn't use any of these stupid, lazy bodybuilder machines, because machines don't demonstrate true strength due to the lack of a core and stability demand. I made a full video about why free weights are far better than machines for athletes, so if you're interested in learning more about this topic, be sure to check out that video. Leon also trains movements and not muscles. Again, bodybuilders like to spam these machines or do lots of isolation work to hit muscles. An example is a cable fly. This exercise is meant to isolate the chest, but it's not a functional movement. Leon and any top athlete will train the foundational human movements, which I'll be going over in this video. While not every movement falls under the foundational human movements, by perfecting these, an athlete will inevitably improve their ability to perform nearly all other movements, physical activities, and athletic skills. And of course, when he is training with these movements, he's not using all this stupid dorky equipment. I also made an in-depth video as to why you shouldn't wear all this nerdy equipment, but one of the key points is that you train the way you play. Because Leon Edwards isn't wearing all this dorky equipment in the octagon, he's not going to be wearing it when he's training. Leon Edwards also works on isometrics. Isometrics are how much force you can produce statically. So many people in the fitness industry only think about eccentric and concentric control contractions, but isometric contractions are very important, especially for MMA. Isometrics transfer very well to MMA scenarios such as holding off opponents, submitting opponents, or maintaining positions such as in the clinch or on the ground. The first thing Leon Edwards does is lots of trap bar deadlifts. While this isn't a movement, I'm giving it its own category because Leon Edwards does trap bar deadlifts so often that his coach gave it its own category. While you do see many fighters barbell deadlifting, Leon seems to prioritize trap bar deadlifts because they're more sport specific. Both exercises are great for fighters because they do an amazing job strengthening the posterior chain, which is a weak link in fighters because they do everything in front of their body. But as I mentioned earlier, Leon Edwards' coach seems to prioritize trap bar deadlifts. You're able to accelerate much faster with a trap bar versus during a squat or a barbell deadlift, which increases the transferability of this exercise to MMA. Leon Edwards also incorporates B stance trap bar deadlifts to focus on one side and prevent any muscle imbalances. This is a common theme with Leon's training, but you will see he still controls the eccentric portion of the movement. Eccentric strength is the amount of tension you can apply to muscles as it lengthens, or in other words, how much force you can absorb. This is advantageous because the more force you can absorb, 
the more force you can produce. Now onto the first two actual movements and we'll be starting with the legs and it will be the squat and the lunge. The squat and the lunge help build lower extremity strength, power, as well as developing the core, which is essential for takedowns, grappling techniques, as well as helping Leon generate more force for strikes. You may notice that Leon does a lot of Zerker squat variations. This is because the Zerker squat is sport specific to MMA as it mimics an underhook position and the body mechanics to lift an opponent off their feet. You want your training to be as sport specific as possible, which is why Leon Edwards' coach programs this squat variation often. Leon also does occasional squat and lunge variations where he's holding on to something for support. Some of the Leon Edwards haters might be like, oh, this guy's lazy, he's grabbing onto something. You have to look at people's training program as a whole. Leon Edwards is not doing these squat and lunge variations as a replacement for the basic squat and lunge variations, but rather to complement them. Holding on to external support, especially for a lunge, will decrease the balance demand as well as the core demand so that Leon can load up these movements much more. You may see these exercises and be like, wow, Leon's doing a ton of squat and lunge variations. Which one is the best? As I mentioned before, the Zerker squat is the most sport specific. None of them are the best because variety is key. Imagine you only barbell squat. At that point, you're not getting better at the squat movement. You're getting better at barbell squatting. That's why power lifters move like ass. In order to master movements, which all athletes need to do, you have to do a variety of different exercises. And this applies to all the other movements that Leon does. Now into the next two leg movements, and it'll be the hinge and the thrust. Just like the lunge and the squat, it works on building overall lower extremity strength and power, but it has a greater emphasis on hip extension. While the thrust isn't considered a foundational human movement, it's very important for MMA fighters, specifically for grappling. The thrust is very important for grappling as it transfers well because it mimics bridging and you're often on your back just like in this exercise. And again, just like the squat and the lunge, Leon Edwards does a variety of different hinge and thrust variations to master the movement and not master exercises. And when it comes to Leon's leg training as a whole, of course he's not doing these stupid leg curls and leg extensions that bodybuilders love. Now onto Leon Edwards' upper body movements and the first will be a push. When it comes to pushing, every MMA fighter, including Leon, will do two variations, a vertical and a horizontal push. You can see that Leon does a variety of bench press variations to work on his horizontal pushing strength and power, and he has overhead press variations and landmine presses to work on his vertical pushing strength and power. Improving pushing strength is key for MMA fighters as it strengthens the muscles needed for grappling and punching, as well as just developing overall upper body strength. Whether you're a bodybuilder or an athlete, you must balance your pushing with with pulling exercises. And just like the push, every MMA athlete will do a vertical pull and a horizontal pull. With vertical pulling being some sort of pull up variation and horizontal pulling being some sort of row variation. You may notice that Leon does some chest supported rowing. And some haters may be like, oh Leon is super lazy, why is he doing a chest supported row? Again, you need to look at someone's training routine as a whole. Leon isn't doing chest supported rows as a replacement for standing barbell rows, but rather to complement them. And while chest supported rowing makes no sense in a bodybuilding routine, it does in an athlete routine because they frequently do full body workouts. Imagine doing multiple heavy sets of trap bar deadlifts and then doing heavy sets of squats and then doing barbell row. Of course, your lower back is gonna be fried, which is why Leon's coach heavily programs chest supported rowing as the low back has already been trained hard. And this will make sure that the low back fatigue doesn't affect Leon's pulling strength. Pulling strength is very important for MMA fighters as it plays a role in grappling exchanges, helps develop general upper body strength and stability, and most importantly, it balances out the immense time spent with the arms in front of the body. The next movement Leon does is a carry or moving things. The carry has to be one of the most slept on exercises, especially in the bodybuilding community, but I would say in general, it's very slept on. And it's very important for MMA fighters, which is why Leon does them frequently. Carries help MMA fighters so much because it helps build the core as well as working on grip strength, which is incredibly important for grappling exchanges. And when it comes to sled pushes, they are a great way to develop power and strength in your feet, legs, and hips. The next movement Leon does is arguably the most important, and it's rotation. Rotation is important for all sports, but it's incredibly important for MMA fighters. Every strike a fighter throws requires rotation to some degree. Leon trains rotation with typical cable and band exercises, but he makes sure to do them explosively. And he also does upper body plyometrics by using medicine ball throws. Medicine ball throws have to be the best exercise exercise 
for developing rotational power. This is because with medicine balls, you're able to keep accelerating through the release point, whereas with standard gym equipment, you will naturally decelerate towards the end of the movement, which is why medicine ball throws are so unique and so effective. They not only works on rotational power and strength, but also resisting rotation with anti-rotational movements that work on his core stability. The core has to be the root of strength and conditioning for MMA, which is why I love training the core so much and I include it in my athletic bodybuilding program. Core strength plays a huge role in power production, punching speed, stability, and so much more. This is why the majority of lifts that Leon does are ground-based freeweight exercises and not stupid lazy machines. While ground-based freeweight exercises do an amazing job working the core, it doesn't hit the core in the transverse plane very well, aka you don't have to work on resisting rotation. This is why Leon works on anti-rotational stability, so he's able to resist motion in every direction. Lastly, Leon does loads of jumping, aka loads of lower body plyometrics. While this technically falls under the squat movement, I made it its own portion. You may be wondering, what is the point of doing lower body plyos if vertical jump doesn't matter in MMA? And that's a fair point. This is because plyometrics improve the rate of force development, and we can't forget that MMA athletes not only use their legs to throw kicks, but also shoot explosive takedowns and even throw punches. I mean, there's even research that shows a correlation between increasing your vertical and increasing punch power. Just like the medicine ball throws, doing lower body plyometrics such as jumping is key in developing power because you're able to keep accelerating through the release point. I mean, if you look at a squat, you naturally have to decelerate at the top of the movement versus when you're jumping, you keep accelerating at the top of the movement, which is why you end up jumping in the air. And that's how you train like a UFC champion. Leon only has an aesthetic physique, but he's an elite fighter unlike these bodybuilders who can't even fight.